Hi, Dan Stein here with my second installment in the Autodesk Forma series, sponsored by Autodesk, a design and make company. In this video, we'll look at how we can get geometry that originated in Revit or Rhino into the Forma environment and even do analysis against it. On the Rhino side, we'll look at this connector that Autodesk has developed and is in a public beta at the moment. We'll also look at this really great noise analysis, which is a new opportunity that uh, I haven't used before, and now that we have this tool, we've been using it more and more to project noise from traffic onto adjacent surfaces. We'll also look at the sun hours functionality and then form us compare tool to see two different analysis side by side. For example, the sun hours in June and the sun hours in December. So come on, let's check out uh, some really great additional features in Autodesk Forma together. As we continue to develop our Forma model, we may have situations where we need to bring in a Revit model. Notice the square footage is just over a million square feet. I'm going to remove this Forma model, and we'll see how we can bring in a highly detailed model into Forma, such as this Revit model, which may have been developed by another team, and we want to analyze it in context. Or it might be a more accurate adjacent existing building. For example, where this project is, just a Two blocks down the street is the Austin Central Library that Lake Flato designed. So since we have the Revit model, we might swap out the one that Forma added that was much more generic. So in Revit, we create a custom view where we hide everything and then we export only what we want to an OBJ file. Forma allows you to import several model types such as DXF and OBJ and IFC has to be less than 100 megabytes. This model is about 60 megabytes. The first thing we'll do is set the units to feet and inches if that's what our model is created in. And then we can rotate the model. You can see it was vertical initially. And now we can place this OBJ model. One thing that's really great about this is things like Forma CFD wind analysis, the computational fluid dynamics will actually work with a detailed model like that. It will simplify it for the calculation, but other programs do not allow you to even have that sort of geometry in the model often that do wind analysis. So once the model's placed, we can move it around and rotate it as I'm doing here. We can position it and then all the analysis will work against this model. But you will notice though that because it's a Revit model we're in the workflow where it started in Revit and went into Forma, it doesn't track the area. So you can see this, the sun shelves are showing up, which is really great. So there's a lot of detail here and it'll look really nice in Forma. So now we'll back out and another exercise that we will often find ourselves needing to do is bringing in geometry from Rhino. Before we do that, maybe we'll make a new proposal. We'll call it Exploration A Rhino. So the original massing will still be in the previous proposal. We can go back to that if we need to. Autodesk has come up with a really integrated way to work in Rhino. Notice the layers in this new Rhino file are generic, but we also have this Rhino to Forma add-in. And when I copy pasted the URL, it actually connected to that Forma project. I see the proposals and then I can bring in site data. And then later I'll use the push button below to push my Rhino model back into Forma. Really a great workflow for when you want to use Rhino in your development process. And what's more is that we'll see here that once we create the geometry, we can put the geometry on the residential or the commercial layers and the areas will be tracked back in Forma. So I'm going to start out by making a small commercial first floor plate. And then I'm going to create several more floors and we'll just call these residential. I think in the previous proposal in Forma, these were called uh, retail, but in this case, they'll be residential. And then I'm gonna copy this up a few times to make a few more floor plates. 
and then I can simply push this geometry back into Forma. Once we do that, we have to do the F5 key to refresh the browser. So over there on the right, you can see the square footage is just under a million square feet. I'm going to click push, go back into Forma, press F5 to refresh the browser. And now you can see the square foot footage has gone up. And if I hover over those functions in the building area list, we can see it highlight those areas. Uh, and then just to show that this is a, a continuous connection, I'm going to add another residential floor and then just offset it to make it a little bit more interesting. And then we'll simply push that back into Forma. So you can see all the context and the topo is in, in Rhino for, for reference, which is really helpful. And now the formal model is updated with this sort of real-time connection back to Rhino. I can select the individual items and functions and, and so really cool workflow. Next, we're going to, now that we have our model a little bit more developed with some Forma geometry and a Revit model and a Rhino uh, geometry, we're going to look at this really great analysis feature for, for noise. So the roads oftentimes will have the speed limit, but not the average daily traffic. So we can go to various websites, the DOTs in each state often have their data available that they've used to track the average daily traffic. And so we can take that number and plug it into that ADT area. I typically just leave the daily traffic distribution to the defaults. Um, and then you'll notice some streets, even though they were imported and this data is out there, they, they don't have any information. So you can click the button to add the, the placeholder property set and then you can go get the speed speed limit for the traffic. You can see this OpenStreetMap website has that. Otherwise, you can do uh, Google Street View and just find a, an image of the speed limit sign for that area. So we can continue to get the average daily traffic data and plug that in for each street that we want to consider the noise analysis against both our, our site, our building, and our roof areas. This is really helpful if we have some, especially if we have some outdoor spaces, a plaza or outdoor dining or a rooftop green space or rooftop dining. Once we get all this information plugged in, and, and by the way, you'll see right there, there's the street splits into two. So the total traffic is the total traffic. So I just divided that 1100 by roughly two so that I'm not doubling up the 1100 vehicles where the road splits. And so we'll just plug in a little bit more data. And all of these results will actually be projected onto the surfaces, including the Rhino model and the Revit model. So here's the noise tab. And we'll notice that it did a quick calculation using AI to figure out uh, what the noise would roughly be. There's an option in the upper right to reset the circle. It can only calculate so much area it's limited to, to conserve resources. And then once we want to run a detail analysis, we can click that and it'll take, as it says, five to 20 minutes. And this is an estimate based on this project and its complexity. So I go ahead and click that. You'll see that there's a legend telling us the amount of noise in decibels that's hitting the surface. So in the lower right, there's a legend that we could adjust. And again, you can see the Revit and the Rhino model are, are getting uh, this heat map projected onto it, indicating the decibel levels. Red is obviously quite loud. Green is, is quite low, a number of decibels. And we can turn on and off the ground plane, the facades, and the roof. So if those aren't important to us, we can turn that off. We can also spin around the model and notice that any roads where we didn't enter data are going to be blank. So that back third street doesn't have any data on the back of our project.
So we could go back and add that data if we needed it. Otherwise, we can ignore it. We have this inspect tool. I clicked on the little icon in the upper right, and you notice I can click, and it'll tell me the exact decibel level at that area. It does blink out areas under overhangs, so it doesn't show data there, as you saw. And so now we'll look at one more analysis before we finish out this second video, the sun hours. We can do this for any month or day of the year. So I'm going to select June 21st. And what's really cool in Forma is while an analysis is processing, you can keep working in Forma and then start additional analysis because this is all in the cloud and all the calculations are being done in the background. So here I actually started two runs, one in June and one in December. So here are the results for December. Once I opened the analysis view, you can see the sidebar on the right has an option to adjust the time interval, but right now it's showing a full 24 hours. Again, my Forma geometry, my Revit model, and my Rhino model are all being considered as part of this and have the heat maps projected onto them. I'm using the inspect tool to look at specific areas. This might prompt me to rotate maybe one of these entire towers to get better daylight. I have a pretty generous site, so it looks like I could fit more on the site by rotating the building and, and maybe making another proposal to see if I can get better daylight on certain parts of the building. Forma has this great compare tool where you can compare for, exist, for in this example, the sun hours for both June and December. As I rotate on one side, the other side follows, so the two views are aligned. Then I can use the inspect tool and it puts the point on both sides in the exact same spot, which is a really great quick way to compare. So these are just um, two examples of analysis that can be done. The last video I did uh, solar energy. So the modeling is really important to understand how to create Informa, how to use Revit and Rhino geometry. You can also export from SketchUp those formats and get SketchUp data in here and then uh, in interpret the results, which is really great amongst your de design teams or with a client.